What is going on, everybody? Happy Saturday. We got a Sunday NFL show for you here. We got week number four, myself and Mr. Bryson Owens. Brother, good to see you. How we feeling? A lot better games on the slate, in my opinion, than last week. I agree with that. And I'm, I'm doing well so far, man. I'm at the point of the NFL season where, even though it's early, I'm pretty... I'm pretty much at the rock bottom as term as in terms of a fan. My fantasy team is all hurt. The the Broncos oh. are off to a bad start. So oh, I can only think positive from here on out. Every, all we can do is go up now. That's all that's all I'm thinking. All we can do is go up. I'm looking for my boys to move to three and one this weekend, but we'll get into that <laughs> game in just a little bit. You guys, we are starting here with the Sunday morning game. If you're like me, you're gonna be mm-hmm. working on about two hours of sleep. Because I'm going to be up late and I'm getting up hella early for this one. 7.30 a.m. We got the Falcons and the Jags in London. Falcons come into this game. Three-point dogs, three-and-a-half-point dogs, depending on where you're looking. Jags, they are considered the home team because they do have a pretty good presence out there in London. And by the way, they play well in London. They are Mm -hmm. three-point favorites, my man. Do you think Jacksonville grabbed yet another win here in London? I think so. I'm I'm really confident in the Jaguars this week. I know they're not off to the greatest start in the world. They were upset pretty brutally last week to the Texans. Came up really short in that game. The Falcons, they've been playing pretty well so far this season. They're 2 and 1 to start. Yep. They have some huge question marks on offense, most of which is because of Desmond Ritter. That run game is pretty phenomenal. The offensive line is great. Desmond Ritter's the one thing kind of holding this offense back a little bit. Whereas for the Jaguars, they have everything in place, and I think they, for whatever reason, they just got off to a really rocky start. I think mm-hmm. losing and putting up the performance they did to the Chiefs in Week 2 really kind of set them back a lot. Yeah. Um, obviously, Calvin Ridley being a big piece that's been added this season, I think he and Trevor are still trying to, trying to navigate things, still trying to build a connection together. And I think Trevor Lawrence has a tendency to force things to Calvin a lot, which is kind of hurting this offense a little bit. Mm. Um. But ultimately, I like where the Jaguars are in terms of a roster more than I like where the Falcons are. I like the fact that they're in London for this get, for this get right game, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, they have the home crowd favorite kind of thing, like you mentioned, because a lot of Jaguars fans in London. So even though the Jags really haven't given too many people a lot of confidence in them so far, I think they get it right this week. I'm right there with you, man. I feel like what happened against Kansas City – we all just expected them to bounce back. We were like, okay, well, whatever happened there, that was a fluke. They're playing the Texans. They're going to be fine. And now we're sitting over here like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are the Texans legit or are the Jags not very good? Mm-hmm. And I think you and I are both on the side of the Jags are a good football team. They've caught some bad luck early. They've been in some tough spots. They probably slept on the Texans a little bit and got punched in the mouth. Yep. I, I, I got to think. They can't afford to drop this third game here, and they play well in London, and they know that they are the better team on paper. If you look at the Falcons and you look at the Jags, they are just a better football team. I expect that defense to step up this game finally, and most importantly, mm. the de- the offense needs to get rolling. They haven't gotten rolling. Even in the first week, I don't think they looked that good, so I really hope that they get going, get the ground game going Tough defense against the Falcons. They're a mean team. They're gritty. Mm-hmm. They make those third down stops when they need to make those stops. So they're going to get tested here. But overall, I'm with you. I like Jacksonville to get this thing done. Now, quick shout out to our friends over at Clutch Bet Sportsbook. Guys, if you don't have Clutch Bet yet, make sure you go to Clutch Bet Sportsbook in your app store or the website and type in Sports Forum. All one word when you sign up to get up to $1,000 in free bets and a $10 free bet on us. Go ahead and DM us and let us know when you sign up. But I'm going to call them out right here really quick. Uh, They might not like this, but it is what it is. I'm going to call it how I see it. And that is they have the Jacksonville Jaguars at minus three and a half, but they made that plus 108. So to me, maybe I'm wrong here. But I think they're kind of showing us their cards. I think they're saying, we think the Jags are going to win this game. We don't want to do three. We want to make you lay three and a half. Mm. And I think that's smart because I do think the Falcons are going to keep this a close game. And the Falcons obviously have a chance to win the game outright. But I think there's a catch here with this three and a half points. Nobody wants to take three and a half at minus 128. And everybody's going to want to take it at plus 108. I think it's a genius move, but I'm just saying. I would not lay three and a half. I would find this number at three. And if you can't find it at three, I recommend taking the money line here 
at the minus 159 and parlaying that. Let me throw out there too, on DraftKings, they have the line at three, but their money line is minus 162. So it's just funny to me. Something's going on here. So I think the money line is better on clutch bet and the spread is better elsewhere. So you guys do with that information what you will. Uh, but I'm going to go Jacksonville money line and Jacksonville minus the three total points, man, 43, 43 and a half, depending on where you're looking. Mm. How you feeling? I like the over in this game. I think these are two very good offenses um, on paper. They've both kind of struggled off and on to start this season. But mm-hmm. I think, you know, especially the Falcons last week kind of got punched a little bit. That offense really struggled to show up in that game. Um, the Jaguars offense, it's just – it's waiting for a spark, I think. Mm-hmm. And I think you're going to see one big play by the Jaguars this weekend that's going to get it going. And I think that – I. I think both offenses have a chance to put up good points. So if, I think 43 and a half is a little low in my opinion. So I like the over in this game. Mm. See, this is tough for me because I feel you on the over, but I'm also, I just said that's a gritty Atlanta defense. And I do not think the Jags defense is playing up to par for how good they actually are. But with that said, they've done nothing to make me think that they're as good as I think they are. I, I've been mm-hmm. that all off season. I'm like, yo, the Jags could be a top 10 defense right now. I'm looking like a fool. They are not a top 10 defense. What was it? 38, 35, something like that. Yeah. The Texans put up on them. So yep. I'm with you until we see them shut a team down and keep them under 17 points. I just can't call them an elite defense. So I'm going to go over the 43 points with you as well. 23 to 20 probably means the Jags are going to cover there, but don't lay three and a half guys. I'm just warning you. <laughs> so good luck in that one. Going to be fun. One more time. That's Sunday, 7 30 AM. We're going to have a bunch of stuff up on our page for that too. So make sure you guys check it out. Jumping over man to what very well could be the NFL game of the day. There's a lot of good ones, but this one is jumping off the board. That is the Miami dolphins and the Buffalo mm. bills dolphins coming into here, man, three point dogs. They are rolling right now. And I know they're on the road, so like I kind of get it, but it's not like they're traveling across the other side of the country or playing at 7.30 in the morning. I don't really understand this line, if I'm being honest. Buffalo, minus three points, minus 142 on the money line, over under 53.5, likely to be the highest scoring game of the day. Mm. What's your take here on this three points, dude? Like, Can we, ex- can we figure out why they're three-point dogs? No, not really. I can't really figure out my only – my only assumption is they are in Buffalo. Buffalo's a tough place to play. The D, the Bills' defense is off to a great start, especially against the pass. They are third in the NFL in passing yards allowed. They only get 142.3 a game. And this this Miami defense, it's not good. They're in the low 20s in every defensive category. And this Bills' offense has all the potential to just put up points in a hurry. And they have – you know, Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, like they have the firepower to keep up with this Bills offense. But we just saw the Miami or the Dolphins offense. We just saw them put up 70 points. Mm. It doesn't matter how bad a defense is to put up 70 points in an NFL game is absolutely absurd. And so I, I really like getting the Dolphins at plus money it and they play the Bills really well. Even when they had backup quarterbacks in last year, they, they played the Bills very close I think it's going to be another good game. Two is on a roll. This offense is on a roll. And I think it's going to be a high scoring game. It's going to be a shootout, like you said. And Mm -hmm. I like the Dolphins' chances to cover and come out with a win. I can't argue you here. There's no way I'm going to bat for the Buffalo Bills and Stephon Diggs. It's just not going to happen for me. So (laughs) I love it, dude. Miami plus three, Miami plus 125 on the money line. How can you not take a shot at them here? It feels like if you lose this on the money line, you can live with it. It's like, hey, you know mm-hmm. what? I don't care. You gave me plus 125 with arguably, arguably the number one, number two team in the NFL right now based on how yep. they're playing through three weeks. So I'm with you all day. Let's go Miami Dolphins. Now, 53 and a half. We both just said high scoring. I'm not going to go too far into this. Over, over, yep. over. I think this could close at 56 and a half or something Oof. like that. So 53 and a half. That just feels too low to me. I don't see how both teams don't get in the upper 20s, mid 30s, maybe Mm -hmm. even like a 42 to 35 game if they're not careful. So for me, that's like this is the easiest game of the week, dude. It's Dolphins plus three and over 53 and a half for me. Yeah, I'm right there with you. And it's an early morning game, so it's not even like it's going to be cold in Buffalo. The Mm -hmm. sun's going to be out. It's going to be nice outside. I it's set up for a high scoring game. 
There you go, guys. We're not going to overthink this one. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe it's Buffalo Bills by 10 and the under is going to cash, but we are not <laughs> on that side. So good luck jumping over to a fun one. And it's time, Broncos country. We said if they lose again, we're not going to talk about them, and we mean it. So here we go. Denver Broncos, minus three and a half. or uh, Yeah, minus three and a half, two minus three, depending on where you're looking. They are on the road here in Chicago taking on the Bears. This is the hot garbage bowl, but someone's <laughs> going to have to win and get rid of that zero Oof. in their category. So Denver Broncos, man, minus three, minus three and a half on the road. I know. I think the simple answer to this question is no, but do they deserve to be minus 165 on the money line against the Chicago Bears? I think so. And a large part of that is even though both teams are not playing well, the amount of jokes I saw on social media saying the team that loses this should be relegated to the XFL. I love was, that. It was every <laughs> other every other page had that joke. Yep. Um, it's These are two bad teams. Both defenses are atrocious. The Broncos are giving up 40 points a game. The Bears are giving up 35 points a game. These are the bottom two teams in that category. So bad. But the Broncos at least have a competent offense. Their offense is moving the ball. They're putting up points. They are above league average in terms of points per game. They're passing the ball really well. Russell Wilson's playing very, very well to start the season. While the Bears, they aren't doing anything right on offense. Mm -hmm. So while both teams are pretty abysmal on defense at least the broncos have something going for them offensively that's mm. i think makes it reasonable to see why they're favorites by the way guys i'm not wearing i'm not wearing bears okay i'm wearing broncos let's just let's just get that out yeah. the way really quick i just noticed that i look like a freaking chicago bears fan um <laughs> I'm with you, dude. I think that the big part, and you just pointed it out, is the offense. We are a better offense than them. I know you have gone to bat in our group chats for Mr. <laughs> Russell Wilson. You're saying, look, guys, Russ is not the problem. They're moving the football. When they touch the football, they usually do good stuff with it. They don't make a lot of really dumb mistakes the way that Chicago does. I, You're not a Justin Fields guy. I'm a Justin nope. Fields guy, and I don't know what the hell this dude's doing. I Oof. can't I can't cheer anymore. I can't defend Man. you anymore, brother. I'm done. I look like a fool up here, sitting up here going, oh, this is the game. This is the game. No, screw that. I'm not doing it this time. Denver Broncos, the offense is better. The defense is better. And I know they just put up 70 and everyone's like, well, how can you say about guys? First of all, it's Miami. And we just told you how lethal that the Miami mm -hmm. offense is. But shit happens. I, I don't know yeah. what to say. Take it, crumple it up, throw it away. It's done. It happened. It is what it is. It's not going to happen again. It may never and happened again 70 points on the broncos so yeah and even though even though the bears defense is pretty terrible already they're also missing their top three secondary players their two top corners and mm. their top safety all Good out point. so you take a really bad defense and then take away their three best players makes it even worse i do have one fear in this game and i do want to address it because i think it's fair and that is where the money is coming in on this game right now. 75% of the bets coming in on the Denver Broncos minus the three and a half, minus three, and 71% of the money. Sharp betters are on the other side, 25% of the bets and 29% of the mm. money. Does that scare you at all? I have no <laughs> idea because this game is so unpredictable. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say no, it doesn't because I have faith in us getting this game done. Okay. getting this job done this week. But, you know, with a game so unpredictable like this, if you want to take something that points to one direction and run with it, I can't fault you for it. I'm with you there. So we're going to fade the Sharps on the Bears, but I'm with the Sharps where they are on the total. And that is on the over 46 mm -hmm. and a half points in this game. I love this bet. It's pretty much 50-50 money right now. There's about 4% more money coming in on the over than the under, and that's very normal. Obviously, someone's going to have to get more sided money. This is a great bet to me, and the fact that the Sharps are on it makes me feel a hell of a lot better. So I'm going to go over the 46 and a half here. I think the Denver Broncos offense is good for roughly 30 to 31 points in this game. I think the Bears mm -hmm. are going to probably put up somewhere in the realm of 20 themselves. So give me mm -hmm. about a 51-point game. I'm going over 46 and a half. How about you? I'm with you on that one. I'm not quite as confident in the Broncos putting up that many points just because I think it could, there could be a lot of run plays in this game. I think mm -hmm. both teams are going to try and establish a run game, so that just kills clock. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's going to be the over because 
We talked about it. Both these defenses are terrible. The Broncos offense has at least done a good job of moving the ball and putting up points. I can see it being somewhere in the realm of like a 27-21 game. Okay. So you're going over as well, though. So that's good. Yep. Guys, either way, I think 46 and a half, it's too low. I, I don't yeah, I don't know I what to tell you. It's too low. I think it should be 48, 49. And the thing is, is like until the Broncos showed that they had a capable offense, I understood it, right? Because they were averaging yep. 16.9 points a game last year. Like, okay, that's fair. But the Bears can't stop my grandma from running the ball <laughs> the middle. And at this point, the Broncos can't either. So yep. like, I just... I, I don't know. I know it's a it's a decently high number, but there's no way that you could take the under 46 and a half in this game. And God forbid the under hits. It's either because one team does not break 13 points or this is going to be the worst game of the entire yeah. day. And I just don't think it's going to happen. I actually think it's going to be exciting. And I think the Broncos not only win it, but I think they win it pretty darn heavily. However, do not lay three and a half points with the Denver Broncos. They do not deserve it. <laughs> and you can look around on your books and find books yeah. that do not have it at three and a half. So if you're on that side, don't do it. If you like Chicago here, find the three and a half and obviously get yourself the extra half a point. Good luck to everybody. Shout out to the Broncos. Mm. Let's get this one done, please. I can't do this anymore. So yes, sir. good luck to the boys. Oh, by the way, guys, I want to throw it out there. Make sure you head on down to Jackson's Lodo to watch the Denver game yep. in the morning. All of the games in general, but obviously huge Denver crowd out there at Jackson's Lodo. Check out our page and get the website 1520 uh, there in downtown. So go check it out. Now, AFC North, stand up. This is going to be a showdown. The Baltimore Ravens mm. and the Cleveland Browns going down. Ravens on the road in a shockingly low total of a 39-point game. Ravens are one-point underdogs on the road in Cleveland. This is a tough line for me because nobody wants to cheer for the Browns. I think that's been a universal thing of, you know what, yeah. Sean plays for that team. I ain't doing it. However, you guys, this is about betting. This is about taking the team that's going to win the game. And the Browns look like a pretty darn good football team. That defense is legit. Their mm -hmm. run game, even without Chubb, is kind of legit. So, I don't know, Bryson. Please talk me out of this one because my gut's telling me Browns, but my head and my heart are telling me Ravens. I can't talk you out of it. I'm on the Browns in this game. It's that defense, largely. I was telling you before we started, they the defense is allowed four snaps inside their own red zone, which is just absurd. And this Baltimore offense, it's fine. It's okay right now. They, the passing game still isn't great. Lamar's still not throwing the ball great to start the season. Um, it's, they're still learning a new, completely new offensive scheme and playbook and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they're missing OBJ in this game. And their Ronnie Stanley, their star tackle, is doubtful for this game against a team with Miles Garrett on the other side, who's just wrecking havoc all yep. over the field. Um, the one thing that I find very interesting in this game, I don't know how most people are going to take it, Deshaun Watson's questionable for this game with a shoulder injury. I think that kind of helps this offense. I think he's been holding this <laughs> offense back a little bit. His decision-making oh, and his no. accuracy has been pretty abysmal so mm -hmm. far this year. He's sixty. He's 65 for 102. That's not those those that completion percentage isn't great. He has four touchdowns to two intercept interceptions so far this season. His de decision making in these games just hasn't been great. And I think even if they go with the, the rookie Dorian Thompson Robinson in this game, he gives a more dynamic offense because he can run the football. He's got a yeah. big arm, and the kid made a lot of really good throws in the preseason. So I think if you don't have Deshaun in this game, that makes me even more confident in the Browns. I love what you said about uh, Finney, and I also love P.J. Walker. I mean, both yep. of those guys can run the ball, in my opinion, better than Deshaun Watson. Absolutely. Uh, you said he's not making great decisions in the game. He ain't making great decisions in life either, but <laughs> we're going to go ahead and let that one go. Um, I'm, it's tough because I don't think I can agree with you that they become a better team this yeah. week. I do think if they got one of those guys ready – like for a couple of weeks and like Deshaun went down, I do think three or four weeks in, we'd be like, wait a minute, this guy's better than Deshaun is for this team. But obviously stepping that's in fair. first game, that's always tough. Um, so I don't know. I don't think it helps them, but I don't think it's the end of the world either. I don't think it's like, oh, Deshaun's not playing. Now it's Ravens all day. Mm, not not necessarily. So, um, all right. So you're going to lay the one point, huh? I am. I'm going to take the Browns in this one. <sighs> Okay. 
I will, I will go against <laughs> you. And guys, I said it and I'm going to regret it, but I said, I'm going with my head and not my, 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 my gut. And my gut says Browns, but I like the Ravens better. I think the Ravens are due to have a good game. They haven't put it all together yet. I kind of put them in that Jags category where I'm like, okay, show me. You have mm-hmm. the pieces, you have the team, you have the coaching. Put it all together and play one damn football game for 60 minutes. And if they do that, I do think the Ravens are going to win this football game. They're on the road. But guys, look, the Ravens, the Browns, they play them twice a year. This is nothing new for the Ravens team. Harbaugh is a dog, and he knows how to win this. I think they got the coaching advantage. I think they have the quarterback advantage. The Browns do have the defensive advantage, but the Ravens, they're in the AFC North, baby. They play mean-headed football too, so don't sleep on that defense. If Lamar can get the ball to his targets, run the ball well, I think the Browns could be in trouble in this game, especially if they got like a banged-up Deshaun Watson playing in there. So I'll go Ravens. I'll take the plus 100. I know it's not a huge dog, but it's enough (laughs) of a dog for me to jump on it. So good luck there. I do want to ask you about a player prop though. And that is Jerome Ford, the running back for Cleveland. He is mm. minus 125 for over 51 and a half rushing yards. I kind of like that over. I do too, especially like we mentioned, I mean, they, the Browns signed cream hunt. He's not going to be up to speed yet. So Jerome Ford's probably going to get the bulk of the carries and whether it's a banged up Deshaun or if they go with one of those backups, they're going to want to lean on the run game in this mm-hmm. game. So I it might just be out of sheer number of carries he gets, but mm-hmm. I like the over in that in that mark. All right, guys, we're going to go Jerome Ford, running back for the Browns, over 51 and a half rushing yards. So good luck if you tail us on that. 39 point over under, my man. The lowest one we've <laughs> talked about so far. I mean, what do you even do with a number like that? Can you go yeah. under? I mean, you just said they're going to run the ball, but can you go under or is it just too low? Mm. I think I think I'm gonna take the under in this one. Mm. Both defenses are really good. These two defenses are giving up 18.3 points per game for the Ravens and 10.7 for the Browns. So if you combine the points these defenses are giving up, they're nowhere close to this over under. Mm-hmm. The Browns defense is playing lights out football. I think there's gonna be a lot of run game in this one, which again eats clock. I think it's gonna be really close. I think you're you're gonna see it somewhere around the 20 to 17 ish mark fair enough sorry guys i'm out here getting my charger because of course my charger came on while <laughs> while my computer's gonna die so sorry about that um but i'm right there with you man um yeah let's ride let's do it i i don't love the total I, i'm yeah. personally i'm not gonna bet it i just think that it's too scary of a number but i, I do like the Ravens on the money line bryson gonna go browns good luck to you guys there and jump on that player prop with us let's have a little bit of fun Live a little bit. Staying on the AFC North, though, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers in action this weekend, taking on the Houston Texans. Mm. Usually, I would look at this game and be like, well, Steelers are going to run away with this thing, but the Houston Texans are a problem. They pulled two upsets in a row. They are now, obviously, at home for this one, taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers, who, Mm. as much as I love my boys, they've had some problems with Matt Canada and this offense, so... I'm not 100% confident here, but looking at this one, Texans, three-point dogs in their own house, plus 124 on the money line. Would you take a shot on them? I would – I don't think so. Mm. I think the Steelers are the way I'm going to go with this one. That defense for the Steelers is absurd this season, largely led by T.J. Watt as per usual because T.J. Watt's a monster. Um, they they pressure the quarterback about as good as any team in the NFL so far this year. The Texans' offensive line already – it wasn't going to be great coming into the season, and they've got so many injuries on that offensive line. They've got so many backups, third stringers, going against the Steelers team that just gets to the quarterback. They Whether it's blitzing, whether it's rushing with three or four guys, they get to the quarterback pretty easily. I think they're going to make life very difficult on C.J. Stroud. I think you're going to see C.J. Stroud throw his first career interception in this game, which Uh-oh. is going to be interesting to see how the kid bounces back from that. The run game for the Texans has been abysmal, so it's been all on C.J. Stroud to mm-hmm. start the season. And I think if you're going to put that much pressure on a rookie quarterback against Mike Tomlin in this defense, it's going to make things. Uh, it's going to make it a long football game for him. And then, mm-hmm. yes, the Steelers' offense hasn't been off to a great start. Matt Canada has been kind of up and down to start the season. I thought you saw Kenny Pickett look a lot more comfortable in their last game. Yes, sir. Um, 
I think they're starting to run the ball a little bit better with more of the two man action instead of just Najee Harris. Um, and this Texans defense, it's overperforming. I don't think it's a very talented defense that they're playing above what I thought they would be to start this season. But I think that you're going to see this offense for the Steelers as they get more comfortable, as you see Kenny Pickett get a little bit more comfortable, kind of get this offense going. So I'm going to take the Steelers to cover in this game. Now we're talking, Bryson. Not, there you go. Now we're talking, baby. And you hey, know what, guys? I'm actually they were our dog of the week last week. Hey, hey, say it louder for the people in the back. That's right. They baby. were our dog of the week <laughs> last week. They're, why not keep writing them? Hey, I told y'all. I told y'all last week. I said, hey, they're going to do this again. They're going to win another game. <laughs> and y'all ain't going to give us no more dog money. Here you go. We ain't, we, yep. We're not getting dog money this time. But this time, they deserve to be favored. They should have been favored last week. But it's fine. We'll take plus money every time. <laughs> Um, but look, guys, you can find these guys at two and a half. You can find them at three. I got to be honest with you. I don't really care what you do. I would say take it at two and a half, obviously. But the Steelers are winning this football game. Three yeah. is a little bit scary. I can't lie. I mean, any points at all is scary because this has a one point football game written all over it. The Wizard of Boz hitting a game winner <laughs> for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So uh, either way, though, it's Pittsburgh Steelers money line for me in this one. I feel like Matt Canada, he did kind of get the offense. I don't want to say going. But it was better than it was mm-hmm. the week before when he was getting booed out of the freaking stadium. So I think that Kenny looks good. Najee Harris, dude, I'm a big <laughs> fan. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna dog you right now. Do not let me dog you next week, please, Najee. I need you to wake up. This whole one yard of carry thing, Oof. this shit stops now. I'm not doing this yeah. anymore. The dude, I love him. I love him, but he's kind of doing like the Le'Veon thing where he sits there, he pauses. And you're waiting for him to explode, but then he doesn't hit the hole. And you're like, go, mm-hmm. go dude, go. Like, yep. please run. And then he just kind of gets tackled. And you're like, okay, what the hell is going on here? So I don't know. I'm a big fan of their number two running back, who I believe is going to have a better game than Najee is. So if you're looking for a touchdown score, I would I go agree. with the number two here. Um, but I do think that Najee at least has a better game in this one. Um he, he's looked out of sorts all, all season. I'm a little bit worried about him, but I think he can have a good game against Houston. That one-two punch is pretty good. And then George Pickens waiting for him to have a big breakout game. Deontay Johnson, we'll see what's going on with him. But overall, I think the boys are looking good. And watch out for that boy, Pat Fryer Muth, because he's a dog at the tight end position. Yep. I think he scores in this game as well. I like, his, I like his yards over. I like him to score. I like his receptions over. He's nice. going to be a big thing for Kenny and Kenny trust this kid a lot. So keep an eye on Pat Fryer I mean, it's Steelers to win this one for sure. Now, 42 points. Usually, and when you look mm. at the defense in general, Pittsburgh Steelers, right? You see the Steelers and you usually go give me the under. TJ Watts out there, he's going to wreak havoc. It's just going to happen. You already said an interception. So, they could struggle there, but these boys hung up 38 points last week on the Jacksonville yeah. Jaguars. And the Steelers offense has been putting up mid twenties as well. So are you going over 42? I am actually going to go over in this one. I think it's a little too Mm. low for me to um, take that under in this one. I know I like the Steelers defense a lot, but this Texans offense, CJ Stroud is playing exceptionally well and he's leading a lot of scoring drives right now. So I think you're going to find while the Texans or the Steelers defense is going to make life more difficult on CJ, they're Mm -hmm. still going to put up a decent amount of points somewhere in the, I would say high teens to low twenties. I think the Steelers are going to be somewhere in that same range as well. I can see them both being in the, I can see it being somewhere around a 20, 24 to 21 type game, 24 to 20, 24 to 20. Ooh, I like that. I think that's a pretty good prediction. Um, Dude, I'm struggling. I want to go under because I just TJ Watt, defensive player of the year, by the way, said it last week, saying it again. Mm. Six to one odds, player there of the year, go. defensive there player of the year. I don't know what the hell y'all are sleeping on. Go <laughs> put the ticket in. He is the best defensive player in the NFL. I don't care. I'm done with this Micah Parsons debate, but that's another talk for another day. Um, I don't know, man. I agree with you on the interception. I agree that we're going to see if CJ Stroud takes that and then he's flustered and it and it kind of ruins him for the rest of the game mm-hmm. or if he bounces right back. He hasn't given us any reason to think that he's going to crumble, but the Steelers defense, they play a whole different style of football. So yep. I'm actually going to lean under and that is uh, and that's painful for me. I wish it was 44-45, but you saw what they did last week before halftime. They had a chance to go down there and score, right? Kick a field goal. And I was losing mm-hmm. my mind because I love the Wizard of Boz. I think the dude can hit from 60 <laughs> every single time. But Tomlin was like, we don't need the points. We have a 
killer defense. We're going to just yep. stop these boys when we come back out. Let's go back in there. We're up barely. And let's and let's just come out and win this game. And he loves to put the game on the defense's shoulders. And he should. But yep. that scares me sometimes because when they have chances to score points, they like to not take them. <laughs> like they like to like like it's most true. teams are like fourth and one on the three yard line. Are we going for it? And Tomlin's like, kick it. Like he just yep. doesn't care. He just is like, yo, I need enough points to give my defense a shot and we're going to win this game. So I'm going to lean under the 42 points, but I can't lie. I like Bryson's pick too. You're going to be sweating that total, whichever way you choose to go. So good luck to everybody in that one. Jumping over to a game that has let down spot written all over it. And that is the Chargers and the Raiders. Raiders here on the road in LA, five point dogs at the spread, plus 190 on the money line. LA Chargers minus five, minus 230. I do want to throw out there this line was six and then five and a half and now five. So it is coming down a little bit. The Raiders are getting some of that sharp money. So Chargers, man, they're at home. They're minus five. I don't think there's a soul in the world, especially on this show, that trusts Brandon Staley. Do you trust the Chargers to cover five points at their own house? I don't. And a lot of that has to do with the amount of players that are missing in this game. Corey Lindsley, they're all pro centers out with an illness. Austin Eckler's doubtful. Derwin James is doubtful. Joey Bose is questionable. They lost Mike Williams last week to an ACL injury, so their number two wide receiver is gone. They're losing. They're dropping like flies, as yep. the Chargers typically do. The Chargers typically drop like flies. Yep. This Raiders team, besides really that game against um, the Bills where they kind of got ran off the field, they've been competitive. They've been in a lot of games to start this season. Mm -hmm. um, and – I don't have I don't I don't usually trust Jimmy Garoppolo in any situation. I still don't trust Jimmy Garoppolo. I know he's going to throw an interception because mm -hmm. um, that's just what he does this season. But I think this Raiders team has just enough. I think you're going to see uh, Josh Jacobs have a breakout game. I think he finally gets going on the ground. I think Devontae Adams has a big game because that secondary for the Chargers isn't very good. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think. Just the near the sheer number of really good players for the Chargers being hurt in this game. Austin Eckler specifically, that's a big one. For whatever reason, it seems like when Austin Eckler's missing, Justin Herbert doesn't know what to do. He doesn't have that safety blanket. He doesn't have that check down guy that he can go to whenever he just needs five yards here and five yards there. Whenever he, Austin Eckler's out, Justin Herbert just thinks he needs to throw the ball 50 yards downfield when that's mm -hmm. just not the case. And it kind of gets him in a lot of trouble sometimes. So, I think the Raiders are set up pretty well to at least cover. I don't think they win the game, but I think they keep it pretty competitive in a division rivalry matchup. Are you assuming Eckler's not going to be out there then? Is that your prediction? I'm assuming so. If he's doubtful for right now, especially because it's a lower body injury and with a runner like him, mm -hmm. you want him as healthy as he can as he can be. Mm -hmm. So I think they're gonna they're gonna sit him for this week. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Austin Eckler right now, minus 250 on most sports books to score a touchdown. So they're saying mm. if the guy does play, he is the head and shoulders favorite to get in. Yep. And Bryson's pretty much alluding to it. Guys, at this point, we do know if Austin plays, he's not 100%. And I got to be honest with you. I think he scores, but I'm not laying minus 250. There's no freaking yeah, way. Absolutely Why would you, not. What if he gets one quarter in and takes a shot and they go, you know what? This is stupid. Put Kelly in and we'll, let's just let this guy sit down. And so to me, I'm just going to throw it out there. If he does play, I would not bet him to score a touchdown. I would take Josh Kelly. But anyway, back to the game. I, I struggle here because I don't think the Raiders are a very good team at all. I know that Devontae Adams had a good week last week. Jimmy yep. G hitting Devontae against the Steelers. Okay, give him some credit. But don't forget, you guys, the Raiders were playing from behind. And so the Steelers, like I mentioned about their defense, they were playing off the football. They were like, you can have every under route for 10 yeah. yards that you want. We do not care. And so did Devontae eat? Yeah, Devontae ate. He got his. Go check his stat line. But is that who the Raiders are? No. Look, look at the first half of football. I mean, I don't think that they're a very good football team. Jimmy G, he's average. The coaching is way below average. The defense below average. Like, yeah. they're just not a good football team. So – Bryson, I feel like a complete idiot, but I'm laying the four and a okay. half or five points here, depending where you're looking. Clutch bets got him at four and a half. DraftKings got him at five. Bet MGM's got him at five and a half. So guys, do your research. Uh, but I'm going to go Chargers minus the four and a half points here. I don't love it, but I just can't put my money on the Raiders right now. So uh, once fair. again, 
I feel like I feel like I'm not going to put money on this game. And I do think the Raiders have every shot in the world to walk up in here and just win this thing like 27 to 24. And everyone's going to be like, there you go. Classic Justin <laughs> Herbert, like we always do. But I also yep. feel like I have to go with where the paper tells me. And the paper tells me the Chargers win this game by seven plus. So we will see how this one goes down. Now, over under in this game, 48 Oof. and a half. That is a very tough number because I just said I don't trust the Raiders offense. Uh, but do you trust them enough to go over 48-5? I don't. I think this is going to be a low-scoring game. Even though I just mentioned the Raiders have been competitive in two of their three games, they haven't broken 20 points yet this season. They've been a low-scoring offense. Their defense has played a little bit better than I think most people think. This Chargers, this Chargers team has a very talented defense. It's underperformed to start the season, but it's talented on that side of the ball. Mm -hmm. um, and this Chargers offense, Justin Herbert's been really good. He's been very efficient. He hasn't turned the ball over. He's He's throwing the ball all over the field. He's not focusing on just one wide receiver, except for last week when Mike Williams went down, he kind of fed Keenan Allen pretty heavily. But yep. Herbert's been very efficient. But it hasn't been the explosive, high-scoring offense we're used to seeing from the Chargers. So I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. It's a division rival game. Those tend to be a little bit more competitive and a little bit more on the lower-scoring side of things. Um, so I think it's going to be somewhere – I think it's going to be somewhere around like 23 to 20. 23 to 20. I think that's a very fair number. I'm going to say like 20. Well, sh shit. I said the Chargers were going to cover. <laughs> so I guess I got to, I guess I got to change this a little bit, but I'm going to go 27, 20 and I'm going to go okay. uh, that the Chargers win and the Chargers cover. Like you mentioned, it's tough to see the Raiders going over, much over 20, but I think they yep. can get to 20 because the Chargers defense, sometimes they can't stop nobody. So yep. You know, 27 20 guys, we're both going to go under here. 48 5 just feels a little bit it's too really high. high. So, you guys take your pick on the spread. Bryson going Raiders. I'm going Chargers. Good luck there. Now, I got a couple of props here that I want to ask you about for, mm. for Justin Herbert passing yards. Over under 275 passing yards is minus 135. Or if you want to go a step further and go 300 plus, you can get him at plus 125. Would you take a shot? I would take the sh I would take the shot on the 300. He's reached over Ooh. 300 yards back to back weeks. He's mm -hmm. playing a very very just untalented Raiders secondary. I mentioned they've the defense has overperformed I think to most people's expectations, but it's just it's not a very talented defense. Um, and yes, no Mike Williams, but they have Keenan Allen, they have Gerald Everett at their tight end, they have good weapons for Justin Herbert, mm -hmm. and with no Austin Eckler, which I think is going to happen, they're going to put the ball in. Herbert's hands to get this done. So I take the shot at the plus money on 300 yards. Okay. And now I got to ask you about one more, and that is his passing touchdowns. Three mm. plus passing touchdowns plus 185. Is it worth a sprinkle or is it too high? I wouldn't do the three touchdowns. I don't think he's going to hit that. He did hit it last week, but the previous two weeks, he threw two touchdowns against the Titans and one against the Dolphins. And that was a Dolphins game that was really high scoring. Both teams were in the 30s. So even in a high-scoring game, he wasn't really the one scoring a lot of the points. I think he's going to finish with two touchdowns. Two touchdowns, but maybe 300-plus passing yards. So good luck yep. if you guys choose to take a shot there on that one. Now, before we get into our favorite dogs, touchdown scores, and more for the week, we got one more game, and that mm. is Sunday Night Football. Swifties, stand up. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Cut. Take two. Yep. I can't say yep. Swifties. I'm not doing it. So, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I said that. I know we're all tired. You just got to shake it off, man. Oh, no, Bryson. No. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, you guys. Yeah, we are so sorry. Um, anyway, jumping back in. Kansas City Chiefs here on the road. They are nine-point favorites, minus 440 in New York. They're at MetLife. Jets, plus nine, plus 340. Seems like mm. Zach Wilson is still the guy, even though there's been a lot said in him this weekend. <laughs> Uh, or this week, I should say, in the media. Hey, let me give it to Zach Wilson, though. I think the guy looks like a walking toddler. He has, I don't know if you watch like <laughs> Hard Knocks, but he is like this giddy yeah. little child all the time. But he handled these comments very well. I was I was surprised. I respect the way he handled it. Uh, and, I, you know, I do think that Zach's looking to silence the haters. The Jets might not win this game, Bryson, but will they cover nine points? I don't think so. 
Mm-hmm. I really don't. And I used to, with big spreads like this with the Jets last year, I would take the Jets to cover because that defense was just, it was good enough to keep them in every game. Mm-hmm. But even this defense is not really performing up to expectations. They're not getting to the quarterback as often as people thought. The passing defense specifically, they're below league average, which is wild to see with such a yeah. good secondary. Those corners are so good that I didn't think they would ever be outside the top five in passing defense. And they're Mm -hmm. not there right now. This chief's offense, granted it was against the bears defense. We talked about how bad that was, Mm -hmm. but it looked like this chief's offense finally got something going. They looked like the chief's offense. We're used to seeing them put up 30 plus points a night. Patrick Mahomes looked really good in that last game. Travis Kelsey, as he keeps playing, coming back from that knee injury, gets more and more comfortable. The receivers are starting to look better every Mm -hmm. week. Um, So I just, and this, this Chiefs defense is really good. It's a top 10 defense right now in every category. Mm-hmm. They put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. That Jets offensive line is awful. Zach Wilson's going to get hit a lot in this game, a just lot. so everyone knows. And he's going to turn the ball over at least once in this game. Mm-hmm. So I, th- I think you can see a very similar game to what the Chiefs did last week to the Bears. I think it's going to be a pretty big blowout for the Chiefs. Oof. All right. Kind of crazy. I, you know, this line was at nine and a half and then nine on some books, it's eight and a half. So, I mean, mm. there, there's something. I mean, uh, like you said, usually in a, in a game this high, you would go, well, hey, guys, look, the Jets got a great defense. Why would I take the Jets? The problem is the Jets probably aren't going to score. They're probably not even going to hit 20 in this game. And obviously, nope. Patrick Mahomes has every chance to hit 30 plus here. Uh, I have to mention it one more time because I weirdly think it plays a factor. Taylor Swift is going to be in the building. And I don't know yep. why that appears to be a thing, but it seems like that that really gets this team going. And you know what? Patrick Mahomes made a comment after the last game, and I wish I would have known Taylor was going to be there because I would have bet my house on Travis Kelsey <laughs> to score. And that is, oh, as soon as I heard Taylor was there to watch, I knew I had to get him a touchdown. Okay, yep. guys, I'm just saying, like, it's going to happen again. So let's take a look here at Travis Kelsey. To score a touchdown in this one, he is minus 149 mm. anytime. Are those odds good enough for you? You know what? I would take it. Mm-hmm. I would take a shot at two touchdowns. He's scored in both weeks he's played. And even though the Jets' defense, this passing defense, hasn't performed very well, like I mentioned, they do have two really good corners. And you can see Travis Kelsey against these safeties and linebackers just eat up this defense on quick plays for from uh, Patrick Mahomes. So – I take a shot at it, especially at those odds. So you're saying you're going to go two? You're going to go at plus three fifty? Yeah, I would take I would take a shot on two. Man, oh man, guys, Bryson's got more balls than me. I'm going to go <laughs> one. I'm going to go minus the one forty nine. Okay. I'll take a shot on one touchdown, and then this is where I'm going to man up on this one. I'm going to go with the guy right above Travis Kelsey on the screen here, and that is Noah Gray, his backup nice. to score at plus 750 anytime. Yep. That's where I'm looking for the plus money. All eyes will be on Travis Kelsey in this game. There is no doubt about it. And what better than to let every linebacker and the spy safety all look at Travis Kelsey, and Noah Gray is just going to be standing there like, hey, Mr. Mahomes, I'm open, <laughs> and he's going to score a touchdown. So give me Noah Gray anytime like here. At plus 750. So, hey, good luck to you guys in that one. I do got to ask you about one more guy here, and that's Jarek McKinnon anytime at plus 250. I'm usually Mm. not on this guy because I like Pacheco, but they are giving Jarek McKinnon so many touches in the red zone that it terrifies me not to take him. Is he worth plus 250 or not in this one? I don't think he's worth – well, I don't know. It's really tough because he, he, unlike Pacheco, could – do it either on the ground or in the passing game. He is a very good pass catching back. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it personally. I think there are other guys I like more for the Chiefs to score in this game, specifically looking at the same one right below him. Um, Oh, no, sorry, a couple players right below him. Rookie Rasheed Rice, if you like plus money, plus 390 to score, he's scored in two games already this season. And for whatever reason, he seems to be – Mahomes' favorite wide receiver target to start this year. Mm-hmm. I would take – if they're going to take a plus money on one touchdown score, to me, I like Rice. What is going on with this number? Yeah, I don't know. He's what? he's scored twice already. He's played very well. He's been really the most Dude. competent. He's been the most competent Crazy. receiver. Yeah. 
Man, Rice, anytime, plus 390. I'm going to check him on one more book really quick because that is nuts to me. Yeah, plus 370. Dude, plus 390 on Clutch Bet Sportsbook. You guys, do yourself a favor. Use code SPORTSFORM now and download Clutch Bet if you live in Colorado. Also, they have a $25 pretty much risk-free first touchdown mm. score promo going on. You could even put it on Rashi to score or even to score first. If you want to get yourself paid and not go to work on Monday. So <laughs> good luck to you guys in that Let's one. Let me, let me go ahead and finish my final, uh, my final take here, but I will go Kansas city chiefs minus the nine points. But you guys, I personally am not going to bet that number because to me, this has one of those games where everything says Kansas city, but it's, it could come down to a three or four point game. I could see this thing being Start of the fourth quarter, we're all like, yo, what's going on? Why does Zach Wilson have two touchdown passes? Why is Mahomes struggling so bad? It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's 14 to 14 at the start of the fourth quarter, and then maybe they win it with a Butker field goal or something. So I'm, I'm, I would lean that way because I can't put money on this Jets team right now, but I'm also not going to put my hard earned money on that. So you guys do with that what you will. Over under 41 and a half. Don't have to spend much time on this one, but is that too low? I think it is. I think it is too low, mm. mostly just because of the Chiefs. I think they're going to put up somewhere around 30. Yep. Oh, even if they put up 30. Oh, man. Guys, I will uh, – okay, Bryson's going over. I'm going to go under here. 41 and mm. a half. What can I get here with this number? I'm going to say Jets 13, Chiefs 21, something – some 24, okay. something ugly like that. Uh, maybe 37, 38 points. So good luck in that game, guys. I don't love the game, uh, but I do want to, I, I do want to slam some chiefs props. So that should be some fun, but let's jump in here, my man, to our top bets of the week. You guys, we got three yeah. categories for you starting here with our parlay of the week, the chiefs on the money line and the Steelers on the money line at plus plus one ten. scale of one to 10. How are you feeling about that parlay? I'm at about a, I'm at about a nine. It's a parlay, so it always gives me a little bit of a, a little bit of a pause. But I think these are two about as much of locks as you can get for these for these games. Guys, Chiefs money line. If they drop this one, I, Oof. I, I don't know what to tell you. Steelers a little bit scarier, but Bryson and I both explained to you guys we think the Steelers are just a better team, and the Texans mm -hmm. at some point have to regress. And TJ Watt and that defense could be the problem for them this week. So plus one ten there on that parlay. Our underdogs of the week. I will let you go first. You are locking in Miami Dolphins on the money line at plus yep. 125. Why? We talked about it a little bit, but the Dolphins, they just put up 70 points, and this offense is just – it's humming in a way that we haven't seen before in the NFL. It's been so efficient, so, so explosive. This Bills team, it's playing pretty well, but I think there are too many holes on this Bills team for them to be favorites after last week. Hmm. I'm right there with you guys. I love Bryson's bet of the Miami Dolphins. I'm taking that with him. I'm going a little bit left field here, and I, I don't know how I feel about it, but I just have to do it, and that is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the money line at plus 145. I'm a Baker Mayfield guy. Yep. I trust this defense. I know they had a tough week, but they played the Eagles, and no one's beat the Eagles yet, so I'm not going to take too much stock in that. Give me the Bucs to get this done over a Saints team who, if Derek Carr plays, I don't really give a shit, and if Derek Carr doesn't play <laughs> – Clearly, they can't win without Derek Carr. We saw that last week. They blew it against the Packers. Yeah. So either way, and even if he does play, I, you might get even better numbers here. And at that point, I love the Bucks here. I think they're in a great sleeper spot. Everyone's writing them off. Everybody, for some reason, likes the Saints this year. So I'm going to go Bucks on the money line. Good luck there. And then touchdown scores of the week, my man. Yeah. Who you got? So I'm going. I'm going back to this Buffalo Bills Miami Dolphins game. It's going to be my probably my favorite game to watch this week. I have Stefan Diggs finding the end zone. I I like the Dolphins to win this game. I think it's going to be the highest scoring game of the week. But there are too many Dolphins players in this game to lay a single bet on to score a touchdown, which just kind of scares me. But if yeah. it's going to be a high scoring game, the the Bills have to find Stefan Diggs to stay in it. So I think you're going to see them force the ball to Stefan enough for him to find the end zone at least once. Stefan Diggs and the fact that he's coming in plus 100 juicy enough mm -hmm. for us. I'm right there with you on Diggs. I'm not a Diggs guy, but he is Josh <laughs> Allen's guy. 
And so you got to assume that, that, that this is going to be a good one for him. I'm going to go with a Denver Bronco, and I can't believe yeah. that I'm doing it, but I'm going Javante Williams anytime touchdown score. I think he has a big game here. This Bears rush defense, they can't stop nobody. And Javante, mm-hmm. honestly, he looks really good in my opinion. I know that you got to be a little bit scared of the, of the number two or the number three taking a touch. But even if the number two or number three gets in before Javante, I think that all roads will lead back to them being inside the five. And there's no yeah. reason to throw the football. Just run it up the middle with Javante Williams. And the fact that we're getting plus 125 here, it is good enough for me. So, Good luck to you guys there. My man, any other dogs, any other touchdown scores, any other bets or precautions you have for anybody going into NFL week four here? So I'm going to stay in the same game you just had with um, Javante Williams. I like Cortland Sutton to score as well. We talked about it. The Bears are missing their three best secondary players going into this game. Sutton's been um, Wilson's favorite red zone targets. Um, he's been his, pretty much his favorite target in general, just in terms of sheer touches. Mm-hmm. But Sutton scored in two of the three games so far this season. I think he's going to find the end zone again. Um, I like Javante Williams more than Sutton because of the run defense, like you mentioned. But I think mm-hmm. both have a really good chance to score here. And then I like Justin Jefferson, every Justin Jefferson prop, every week. Yeah. I would hit his over on receptions, yards, touchdowns, whatever it is. Always take Jefferson. I like every single guy you just said. I'll throw one more out there just for fun. I don't trust this team, but I do trust this player. And I'm shocked that he didn't get in last week. And that is Tony Pollard. Anytime Mm -hmm. touchdown score. They are at home this week against the Patriots, which is the reason why I did not pick this as like my favorite touchdown of the week, but at home, Tony bald and magically didn't get in. The dude's going to get in this week, you guys. So yep. good luck on all of those props. All those games should be fun. Head on down to Jackson's Lodo there in downtown and go watch the games. Tell our guy Joe hello and have some fun out there. And also, guys, got this. want to pop this up for you real quick. Make sure you check out our website at sportsforumdenver.com. I'm going to have that article up for you on the CU Buffs game. Bryson's going to have that Broncos Bears article up for you. All you got to do is click that click here green button. Take you guys to our latest article. Also going to have a giveaway, as you can see there. It says, thanks for entering. That's our last one. Got a brand new one coming out this weekend as well. So make sure you check it out. Sportsforumdenver.com. That is it for us over here at the Sports Forum. My man, it's been fun. Let's have some fun here in NFL Week 4. Guys, give Mr. Owens a follow at Bryson Owens 16 myself at Rig Sports Talk, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Denver Forum. We'll see you guys next week. Good luck on those bets. Peace.